All right, everybody, welcome to the first tactic of 2023. We're keeping it simple. It's Ten Hags, 4-2-3-1, with a complete forward, with Val Vedcast on his way. I think he's going to really suit this central forward role. Complete forward on support. It's an isometrical 4-2-3-1. Patrons, as always, the link for the tactic for you to download for free is now available, so go across the Patreon and check that out. If you do want the download tactics, links down to the Patreon, down in the description. However, if you just want to follow it step by step, we'll go through the player rules, player instructions, and team instructions. We'll have a few look at a few little stats, and we will take a look at a 7-2 demolition of Newcastle United. All right, guys, let's get into it. Smash the like on today's video. Let's get stuck in. Okay, so here is the 4-2-3-1. Now we have played up until... The 4th of 20th of January, and we are 4th. We're only four points off the top. It's been an okay start to the league. What One thing that I will say about the Manchester United squad is that when you're playing it, if you, especially in these attacking areas, a replacement for Nandes, there isn't one. A, place, a replacement for really Sancho, there isn't one. And Anthony, there isn't one. Rashford's been doing the job for me up front because obviously we have the updated database. There's no Ronaldo. Anthony Martial is a little bit smelly. So I've we've kind of struggled. In particular, in Europe, we didn't even qualify out of the Europa League group. I played the second string. It went horribly wrong. However, this team has kind of started coming together and we've improved as the season's gone on. Now, I think Ten Hag will go with the 4 2 3 one I've tweaked a couple of little roles with a few player instructions and we'll, and we'll talk about the reasons why I've got this isometrical approach. Okay, so, sweeper keeper on defend, no player instructions, David De Gea. He's doing a little bit more in terms of passing, but nothing too great, so we've just got him on that defend duty. We've got Delot, no player instructions, wing back on support. Two defenders, ball playing defenders on defend, Varane on the right, Martinez on the left, Martinez uh, instruction of dribble more because he just like to carry the ball a little bit, and then Luke Shaw, left hand side, wing back on defend. Now into the middle of midfield, there's a couple of roles, I think Anankaman is not good enough for Casemiro because he's quite good at passing, he has a beautiful range, I didn't realise how good his passing was until I've seen him in a Manchester United shirt. So... With that thought in mind, he doesn't really drop in to make a back three either. We don't really build up like that. So I've got him as a DNM on support because he has, to be fair, been getting into the penalty area. He's got a couple of goals in and around here. He often gets in, backing up play. So we've got him as a defensive midfielder on support with the player instruction of take more risks. I just want him to be quite, you know, like he is at Manchester United. He's so good on the ball. His first thought is always going forwards. Lovely little one-touch passion, but then at times he plays these wonderful balls. So I thought take more risks is kind of what Casemiro will do, and he's got the intelligence, he's got the composure as well to hopefully do it at the right time. Now, Ericsson was a, a, tr a tricky one. We've kind of done a couple of things with him over the sort of like the first half of the season. We've had him in as a double pivot, as in right next to Casemiro, but he does get a little bit further forward. The advanced playmaker, rolling playmaker, I didn't get it because... He does drop in. He does drop in these areas and plays from quite deep. And then the next minute, he's quite high up the pitch. So I thought, right, let's stagger it. Let's go a little bit. We're going isometrical in there anyway. And then that gives him the opportunity at times to get into that kind of shape on the left-hand side of Fernandes. But Fernandes generally, hopefully, as time goes on as well this season, just coming across to this right-hand side a little bit more. I think that's where he is at his best. So, Ericsson on the left-hand side. I don't think we've got any player instructions, no, no player instructions for him. Then into the attacking four, Anthony on that right-hand side. We've got stay wider and shoot more often because we want to see him cutting in on that left-hand side. Inverted winger on support, though. Shadow striker on the in the sort of like the right. We want this right half space for Fernandez. I do like it for Man United when he gets in these areas and picks up balls. And not so much now, but in the early days, he was so good at going, sort of like, not in behind, but he was making those late runs into the box. And if you look at his stats, 15 goals, 10 assists in 27 games. He's made a really good start in that position. So there he is, shadow striker, shoot more often, player instruction. Sancho on this left-hand side, inverted winger on attack. Now, it doesn't really suit him. However, I think the idea is, I'm trying to build this as a realistic um, replication of Manchester United. So really... That would be Marcus Rashford. I've got Sancho out there because Martial has had a stinker up front. So I've had to play Rashford up there because he's the one that is scoring his goal. 16 goals as well for Marcus Rashford. So it's kind of worked out. But obviously Man United, you would expect without head, head cost, I think, to play a lot for Manchester United 
in this last half of the season. And you'll see, especially because we haven't got Sancho at the moment, we'll see Rashford going out there. Garnacho, Alanga are nowhere near good enough for Manchester United at this precise time as well. So we really need to try and, if I carry on this save, I really need to get in another striker. Okay, so that is that. Complete forward as well, on support for that number nine role. I think Martial does it well at times, sort of like drifts in, drops off. But then this complete forward will also go in behind. It'll hold up the ball, it'll make it stick. My ideal Manchester United fans that are watching, let me know who's your ideal number nine for next season. I want Harry Kane. I hope you don't find it a little bit obvious. Um, I just think complete forward on support in this side with like uh, Anthony one side, San uh, Sancho, Rashford, Fernandez playing off him, Casemiro, Eriksen. I think he will be absolutely world class. You can get him from less than 100 million, four seasons. I think the age thing isn't so much of a problem for him because of how he plays as well. If he stays fit, he's been all right injury-wise over the last year or so. So, fingers crossed, that would be my choice. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Okay, so that is the starting eleven. We'll go over to the team instructions. Uh, positive mentality, width fairly wide. We're playing out from the back. Shorter passing and slightly lower tempo. We're just trying to generate some control, some possession numbers that Ten Hag likes. Working to the box on as well. And be more expressive. Very important, I think, when we've got like Marcus Rashford in there. He's, he's okay in the air, but not amazing. And we've also got low crosses. Okay. In transition, there's no counter press. We're, you're not just starting to do it a little bit better. Still not amazing. You know, Rashford's still learning. Sancho's not great at it. Anthony's obviously quite good at it, but I've just left that off. I think if you really want to push this tactic on a little bit, counter press may be the one for you just so you can get the ball back a little bit quicker. Slow the pace down when De Gea gets it. He doesn't rush. He often just slows it down as much as he possibly can. He doesn't rush his kicks, obviously, unless he has to. Distribute to the centre-halves. Take short kicks. Out of possession, we've got a high line, high, high press, with a trigger press more often. Trapping outside, and we're trying to stop crosses whenever we can. Okay, so that is the tactic. The 4 2 3 1. Any fans, Man United fans or even football fans, what would you change? And I kind of think that the Ericsson role is quite debatable. Fernandez often has now become a little bit of a playmaker, but I do think when we're at full tilt with Rashford on that left hand side, I would love to see Fernandez becoming that sort of like shadow striker again. And obviously, that number nine position is absolutely massive. Okay, that is the lineup. Let's just go and have a look at how it is looking in terms of stats. So we haven't got massive amount of possession. We're up to 55%, which is probably about where Man United are at the moment. We're not absolutely dominating games with the ball just yet. I think, obviously, over the next year, we'll see that increase. So it's kind of realistic. Our PPDA is the third best in league. We obviously are pressing high, but we're not counter-pressing. So quite happy with that. I think that's where Manchester United will be. I think they'll still be behind, obviously, Liverpool and Man City for the foreseeable. But still pretty good. We've also got an expected goals underperformance. So we're going to put that down to not having that real number nine. Decent enough goal record. Only 19 conceded. And shots per game. Shots per game. We're still six of Manchester City. I do think... The, the, the issue we've got at Manchester United, I think at the moment, is the general quality of the squad. You know, once we lose those attacking first four players of um, Rashford, Sancho, Fernandez in particular, we've been playing Donny van der Beek there a lot, especially in Europe, and it hasn't really worked. Man United are really struggling. I think the other teams, in particular Manchester City, the benchmark, they've got that rotation of maybe six, seven players in those positions where we haven't so that's going to be key I think for Manchester United over the next couple of seasons making sure we've not only got we've got plenty of bodies at the moment at Manchester United but the quality of that second 11 you know the midfield what happens when we lose Casemiro what happens when we lose Ericsson we're going back to McFred and Tomane there aren't we so things definitely we're on our way Manchester United but we're still I think a million miles off okay so the form has been okay in particular recently we've started to pick up we've had a horrendous run in Europe as I said, but there's more, a lot of greens in there undefeated in a long time. And we had this 7-2 win over Newcastle. Let's just go and have a look at the goals, a few little snippets. And let's see what we can pick up from the tactic. And let's see how it looks in the match engine. Okay, down this left-hand side, we've got the sort of like the inside forward roll, which would be Rashford. So you can imagine Marcus Rashford doing this. What I do like as well, Ericsson, deep line playmaker, but is getting in a really advanced area. Really advanced area, which is really good. And obviously Casemiro as well getting in around that penalty area. I think if he was a half-back, he would be way back here, and that's not what we're seeing from Casemiro. 
And Ericsson, lovely dink into Anthony, taps it into the back of there. Anthony scoring, obviously, scored a similar goal, not a similar goal to it, but getting in at that back post. Who was that against? I think it was Everton in the FA Cup. Anthony again, hitting the byline, cutting onto that left foot, teeing up. Bruno Fernandes, that's where we want to see Bruno, that second striker, especially when we've got that complete forward dropping off as well. There's Casemiro, what a pass that is, the risky pass. Rashford, it's not Rashford, but we're going to say it is Rashford down that left-hand side. You can imagine that happening. Turning, cutting back, we do get a little bit of luck, and once again, the late run from Fernandes, scoring his second goal. The lot this time getting forward, cutting it back to Anthony Casemiro, Deep line, uh, sorry, defensive midfielder. But look how far forward he is. And Ericsson obviously spotting at the edge of the area. Teeing up Ericsson. And then teeing up Fernandez to smash it in. And then in the second half, we ran Riot. Ericsson and Casemiro combining again. The lot's gone on a little bit of an underlap. I think what we've created there as well with Anthony keeping the width, it does allow a lot to come in on that inside a lot more. Ericsson patient in possession. Little bit of luck, to be fair, with that one. Marcus Rashford getting on the score sheet is a complete forward. And then picking up the ball again, Casemiro involved in absolutely everything. Wing back on defend as well. I think that's important to know as well. You know, wing back on defend. Look how high Malassia is on the pitch at the moment. He's not going to stay back in these areas. They do get forward at the right time. And then Rashford again. We kind of, we didn't really speak about it when we were doing the tactic, but we've kind of obviously put Marcus and the complete forward. I think because we were aiming and playing Marcus a little bit in this world, I've got him on that left-hand side because Marcus just naturally drift off to that left-hand side. And then if you think of Fernandez's runs and how Man United potentially may press going forward, you might see it as a 4-4-2 out of possession and Bruno Fernandez going into that area there to team up. So that's why I've done it like that. All right, guys, as I said, Patreons, tactic link down in the description. If you do want to become a patron and get all the other previous tactics and previous and and the other tactics to come in 2023, please consider jo uh, joining the Patreon link down in the description for that. As I said, Patreons, it's over there now. Plug it in. Let me know how you get on. What would you change for a Man United tactic as well? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. This is coming out Monday. And on, thir and on Thursday, there's going to be another tactic video as well. We're going to be looking at De Zerbe's Brighton and Hove Albion, something that I've really enjoyed researching over the last few weeks. So make sure you stick around for that. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you later.